esquina, cinco por una peseta, la buena toroja, tres por 29 centavos y la una a 19. Here, outsiders say there's nothing much to see. Nothing at all. What there is, we have seen before, elsewhere in this city and in other cities. We've seen it so often that we cannot see it at all. There is a wall about the southern tip of the Bronx. It is not formed by the L track, the rivers, or the curve of the Rays Expressway that speeds us on our way always to somewhere else. It is a gray wall that whispers, here, nothing. But the wall itself is a lie. Within these five square miles, there's nothing but 350,000 New Yorkers. Me up like they do with a kite and fly, you know, fly me, you know. Maybe that'll solve a whole lot of problems, you know. If I like it up there, I just cut the string so they can't pull me back down. Sometimes I wish I was Superman, like, uh. Fifteen years ago, the neighborhood was Jewish and Irish, with a scattering of others. Now it's a neighborhood of the others. And still the faces go on changing. People forever moving in and out of the area, or from block to block. Ninety-five percent of the neighbors that I knew in the Bronx, they moved out or had dead. Going down, down, down. Yes, there's quite a lot of changes around here. It's ha it has deteriorated, very much so. 
There's uh, yeah, better places over in the jungles of Africa than there's around here. <laughs> Due to the influx of uh, undesirables. Undesirables, is that right, right Henry? Yeah. That's right. I'd rather work here than any other neighborhood. There's no holdups here. You don't, you don't see that here. How's the storekeeper? They're very happy here. I have been born and raised in this neighborhood. Down there was a gorgeous place. Like Fifth Avenue. Fifty-one years ago, I was raised right, here. She, she lived there. Ain't the same neighborhood. He lived, he lived. There's no more trees in Alexander now. It's all down. Why don't they talk American? The newcomers agree, as if it were a key to everything. For you to live out in the city, uh, you should know a little English. Because if you don't, uh, you'll have a hard way to go, man. But thousands here speak nothing but American. And still the doors stay shut. Chiquitos, chitlins, platanos, and sow belly. A little broken Spanish and some credit on the cuff. Keep the old shops going, despite the supermarket nearby. Chasing the kids here, they start stealing. Steal apples, anything, any fruit they can catch. They go on to school, come back three o'clock, the same thing again. What could you do about it? There's nothing you can do about it, you can't hit them. A trickle of money runs from here to the city. Economists suggest that if the trickle could become a flood, perhaps it would crack the wall. All right, you want to owe me your two pennies? I'll, I'll trust you. You'll give it to me next time you come. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. 34 out of 35. All right. Every year. Everybody today, you're hungry, you got to eat, you got to spend your money. Hey, you got a little more. 34 and a pair. And I think that all of this colored and watches and this and that, it, I think the colored people, the good ones, are being hurt more. I mean, just what we read in the paper, what's the difference between the Corps and the Peace Corps? No? I gave you the best reason in the world. Wait a minute. Will you keep quiet a minute? Let me get... What is it? Look in the daily news today. But downtown business already has a stake uptown. Along with the welfare checks comes the salesman knocking on tenement doors. Color TVs, just five dollars down, and months, years to pay. So twice a month, the South Bronx has status, constitutes a market. Then the salesmen leave, and everything is as it was. Me, my brother, my sister, the family, six. Three, six. My, there's my sister, Nancy, and she's two years old, and there's my brother, Louis Rodriguez. He's 14, and there's me, Manuel Rodriguez, and I'm 13, and there's my sister Irma. She's seven years old, and my mother, Irma Diaz, and my father, Louis Diaz. Last night, there was a rat. He, he came in, into our, uh, my sister's room, and she started screaming. Um, she, um, she started screaming. My father thought that it was somebody trying to do her bad, and then, and then when, she came, when he came in, it was only a rat um, going on, on the bed. have so, so many children that they receive nothing, or no help from home. If I go to the public school uh, rooms, many times I, I see uh, these youngsters sleeping for one hour. And uh, I ask myself why they sleep. And the answer is that when they go home after school, or at night, they have no place to sleep. So I, all I said to her was, I, the same to your mother. That's my answer. You call me a bastard. I always say, same to you or to your mother. I'm a mother, right? Is that wrong? You can see. Hello, Ma. Hello, Pa. <laughs> I'm my best. Houses are falling apart, man. The landlords don't want to do anything about it, man. You cry to them, like, 
Yeah, man, the sink runs so night, man. We tell them about it. They don't, okay, we'll do it, man. This been going on for a year now. They've been giving us this whole crap, man, you know, in and out, man. That, and, uh, it really makes a whole lot of noise. I sleep next to it, man, and follow here. And, uh, it keeps me awake most of the nights, you know. And sometimes I just feel like going in there to tear it all apart, man. But I know they put me in jail for that, so I got better sense than that, you know. Then we have uh, have uh, reading problems. Why? Because these these youngsters they read only when they have to read at school. But when they go home, they have nobody to imitate. The fathers and mothers never buy even the newspaper. <laughs> The only problem left is who buys the sodas. Survival is what counts, but not at any price, man. This is not the bottom of the heap. What will you do when the sun comes up? I always dream of being a movie star. Or if not a movie star, I wanted to be a doctor. If not a, a doctor or electrician. Well, I'm going to join the service. I'm going to study to be a policeman. Why? Huh? I like the job. I have to work on the highway on a motorcycle. ghettos go, this one seems less forbidding. It is not like other ghettos where the poor stay put. Here, they are on the go. Nothing is stable. A few who never fled live on in fog, nostalgia, confusion. So far, we come a long, long ways to a neighborhood that in the future will be known for the next 10 years as the town of greats. And you can't open a business unless you put a grate on the front door. It's a good feeling to play stickball. I know that. You know, the idea that now you can hit the ball from here, clear across to the next block, when before you could only hit it from here to the center of the block, it's a different thrill altogether. Here it hits the fire escape and you're, you're waiting anxiously for that ball to come down. It bounces from side to side. And then you finally you catch the ball or miss it. And if you miss it, everybody boos you. Then you pick it up and you throw it over. And you enjoy it. It's a sweet kick. It's a sweet kick. At 2 o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon, smack in the middle of a work week. Who are these Wednesday ball players? The left fielder will be 33 next month. At midnight, he may take a train downtown to his job, at a hash house, restaurant, or hotel kitchen. Or well, there may not be a job to ride to. Uh, we Puerto Rican women are trained in manual work since childhood. That gives us a chance, a better chance, when we come to this country to get fairly decent jobs, better than the men, that is who are usually non-skilled and will have to go into as a chipping clerk in the department stores or the laborers anywhere. It's very hard. It makes it hard for the children and hard for everyone. And because of this fatherly image being torn, the father then sits back and says, well, you started the whole thing. You wanted to work and be like a man. And now I lost all authority. So now you handle the whole situation. Don't complain and just take it as. There is time to play, time to be boys, like their sons. And the boys cannot wait to be men. They don't know yet whether men fight or just go under. They're raised in a proud image, a chismo. I'm a man, and you might prove it by uh, having a couple of girls hustle for you, by rumbling, being the president of the club in your block, the best dresser. You have to prove. There are no more rumbles, report the police. Once a local bopping gang, the Suicides, could muster five divisions, 200 armed kids. That's all gone now. 
Only the blood curdling names remain. But if the trouble is no longer out in the open, where is it gone, officer? Uh, well, I'd say it's a, uh, there's a different type of uh, feeling amongst the youngsters today from what it was years ago. It, they, they were bursting with energy, it seemed, before, and uh, they would let their feelings be known by fighting amongst themselves with gangs. But uh, it seems that the uh, real big gang activity has disappeared. Uh, what did you say, Roger? Sure. If my youngsters are addicted to ghosts. Well, one is 11 and one is 12, but the 11-year-old the two- has been doing it for two years. He was a beautiful child with a mass of black curly hair on his head. Today, he looks like he's about 90. As the years pass by, there's on, more narcotics than there are bopping gangs. They're both a rebellion of, against what's going on, what they don't like. This isn't my world. This is my world. Here's where I live. Now you want to you wanna join my world? You have to talk my talk. Act like me. They believe that there is a lack of respect towards them. And in that lack of respect, the only thing to hand back is lack of respect. And the only way to do it is the quiet way. Little boy, he was up in the roof and then he fell down uh, uh, because he was in the roof flying a kite. When he was falling, he grabbed onto the clothesline. And the clothes, no, no. clothesline told him did not. No, fall. no, no. All of them broke, and then when he fell, all his body was full of blood. The streets are unsafe, the papers say, full of muggers and rapists and purse snatchers. Fear is cement for the wall that keeps this neighborhood off limits. The people who live here walk the streets after dark and see only their neighbors. Even junkies are not anonymous or faceless. They too are neighbors. Only they suffer more. And in the bars, old timers who cannot look forward look backward. I remember as a little child, I'm saying a child, 12 years old. There used to be an old band that used to play up on a band top. Uh, where did that house go? Just disappeared from the neighborhood. On a midsummer night, a mobile theater brings Garcia Lorca to a schoolyard uptown and people see their lives costumed into a carnival. Here's an audience ready for make-believe. They wait hours to see free theater, or pay two dollars and stand four deep to laugh at Latin vaudeville. Larka or soap opera, they respond. The night is alive with the culture of the culturally deprived. It's not easy to have a home where a man has lost this image of himself. Home is not to him as important as it was or it would have been. He goes out, he congregates in the corners to talk and whatnot. He goes on the sidewalk, sits there with his three or four more and play dominoes. She could be in love with him or whatnot, but uh, if he's not a man anymore, there's nothing else there. That's how we look at it anyway. <laughs> Secretamente, yo he jurado querer.
Sí, al fin, discretamente. Amor que por lo demás eres ajeno. Los dos hemos pecado de este modo. Me quiere porque de ti se ha olvidado. Sunday morning is only half awake. People rise late, but they rise. For those who will not cut short Saturday night for the sake of Sunday morning, there are services as late as noon. Episcopalian, Pentecostal, Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, and the ever-present spiritualist. This is a day to shake off the dust of the week and head for the ball field at St. Mary's Park. Suddenly, there are families everywhere. This is a day for the playgrounds and the grass, a day to wash the car, a day for a solemn communion, a revival shout, or a hymn with a tambourine beat. If I do go to church, I, I feel like I'm doing something, you know, right, you know, like I'm, like I'm trying to show God. And, uh, that's about the only reason when, uh, that I go to church for it. So I won't feel so gu guilty about you know, God or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I find it a complete bore, like I said now. A ghetto minister's thoughts are not always of heaven. Many churches like, like this uh, church, they have facilities, they have uh, room for uh, this kind of uh, social problems. The thing is that sometimes there is a, a, a lack of knowledge in, in, the, in the church side. They, they take care only of the soul. They preach the gospel and they, they take care of the, of the religious services. But uh, we have a soul, but we have also a body. The bleachers are full, not just children and their parents, but uncles, aunts, cousins, godparents, brothers-in-law, and in-laws of in-laws. Some kids come to watch their fathers, some fathers come to watch their kids. Me, I, I have some money for him already saved. I have insurance policies for him, and I would like him to go to college. And, but what I want to be, I can't say because that's up to him, you know. Well, to me, I think uh, I like him to be a, a doctor or something like that. It's more important to him, you know, because this way he could help out people, you know, which is a very uh, important in this world now, you know. The pitcher, umpire, and scraped ice man know each other. The fans know each player. Not by the number on his back, but by his name and the town his uncle comes from. And the, the name of this league is Puerto Rico League. To play amateur baseball, the grown-up man, young man, just to keep away from the street and have a little fun. Pancho, the only trouble with him is he works nights. But he's a good hitter, he'll hit anybody. But uh, the hours kill him.
not yet begun. Everyone knows it'll be like the last. In this in-between time, you catch your breath and wait. What happens here is uh, there is a lack of motivation. These people, these people don't don't know how to go out and uh, get the solution. The Caribbean is fifteen hundred miles and sixty-five dollars away. But when things are uptight, the islands seem greener than they ever were. The one-time sugar worker forgets the agonies of unemployment. Going back is a soft, sweet dream. People talk so much about it. They tell me that the water's blue up there and green. We got a whole lot of trees, pine trees, uh, willow trees, and all sorts of beautiful things out there and uh because I love pretty things, you know, I love Well it's more peaceful. <laughs> when my days are over I will go there and sit down and relax. I hope I hope I can do it. <laughs> That's up to the Lord. He will tell me when. The only thing I keep hoping. So But the Bronx is here and the Bronx is now. A lot of people tell me now, but I'm not giving up. Because I went through hell with, with the life I was living on dope, you know? I don't want no more of it. So if I'm doing good, I, I'm, like I tell you, like, I don't know, like, I live from day to day basic. I never know what's gonna happen next day, man, you know what I mean? But I hope I don't give up, you know? Because life is much beautiful without being uh, scared or anything like that. I hope not to give up. I hope I get help soon. The fear is held inside. The rage is held inside. The city sees this place only when the storm breaks. It doesn't see the hope that keeps the kites aloft all day, all night.